Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a quadratic when it's in vertex form. Now, when, identify, when graphing a quadratic in vertex form, it's very important to know two, two things. One, what exactly is vertex form? And I guess I did not write vertex form anywhere. So let's go ahead and write vertex form right over here. So vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now, what's nice about vertex form is we can easily identify the vertex as just h comma k. And also, we can identify the axis of symmetry as the axis of symmetry as x equals h. So it's really easy to be able to um, figure out what the vertex is as well as the axis of symmetry. And that's going to help us graph it. Now, for these four, uh, six examples, I'm going to graph them when a is equal to 1, which should make it even nicer and easier. So the first thing, though, I'm going to do is I'm going to graph what the parent graph looks like. So the parent graph is just going to be if I was just going to graph f of x equals x squared. Now, it's very important for you to understand if you were to use a table of values, then the graph would go up over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4. Because if you plugged in some numbers, if you plug in 1, 1 squared is 1. If you plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. So when you go ahead and connect these, what you have is the shape of our quadratic, which we call a parabola. Or a lot of times people call it like the U-shaped graph. It looks like a U. All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to identify what exactly are, is the new vertex, and then just basically redraw that graph. Since our a is going to be 1 in all these cases, a negative 1 in a couple, but and since the absolute value of a is equal to 1, there's not going to be any compression or stretching. So therefore, I'm basically just going to take this graph and move it around. Now, the easiest way to do that is to identify the vertex. So in this example, you can see that the vertex is at 0, 0. All right. But now, when we look at our new equation, you can see that h, I don't have a value for h. There's no x minus anything. So therefore, h is going to be 0, and k is going to be 2. <coughs> Excuse me, because that's what I'm adding over to my function. So my new vertex is going to be at 0, comma, 2. And I'm will going to want to write that out. So for this example, my vertex. Again, I'm not adding or subtracting inside the function. So my vertex is going to be 0 for h and then 2 for k. Uh, the axis of symmetry is still going to be h, um, x equals h. So therefore, that's going to be x equals 0. So all I'm simply doing is just taking this graph and shifting it up two units. So I'm still going to go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, and then over 2, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the axis of symmetry is right, that, right there on the y-axis. Now in this example, um, you can see that I'm not adding or subtracting anything outside. See how well, I'm adding to outside the function? Here is, here is subtracting to inside the function. But the other important thing to rec remember about this is it's x minus h. So therefore, it's x minus h. So it's x minus 2. Therefore, h is equal to 2, which is a very common mistake with students. So therefore, I can write in the vertex is going to be 2 comma, well, I could really just write a plus 0 there because I'm not adding anything, 2 comma 0. So therefore, rather than shifting the graph negative 2, my h is actually positive 2 because it's h minus 2, or x minus h, x minus 2. 2 and h are equal. So therefore, it's plus 2. So therefore, I'm basically shifting this graph two units over. So if I had a scale here, 1, 2. So therefore, my new vertex is going to be at 2 comma 0. Now, all I simply need to do is follow, again, the same pattern of my parent graph. Go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 1, up 1. And you can always use the axis of symmetry here. The axis is x equals h, which in this case is 2. So I can draw a nice little vertical line here. All right, And by doing my vertical line, whatever points to the left, I can reflect over to the right. Then I just connect and make this nice little shaped U graph. All right. Um, one thing that ah, one thing I did forget to do is talk about domain and range, and I figured that might, this would be a great opportunity to go and do that. So let's actually go back here um, real quick to this example. 
If we look at the black graph, the domain is going to be the set of all x values that make up that graph. Well, you can see as this graph is going up, it's continuing to expand. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. Or we could write from negative infinity to infinity. The range of the black graph, again, is going to be the set of all y values that make up the graph. Well, domain, we go from how far left to how far right. Well, in this case, it's infinite many. It's all real numbers. However, the range is how far low is the graph going to go to how far up. Well, you can see the black graph only goes as low for the y coordinate as 0. So the range is going to be from 0. I'm going to use a bracket because it's a, 0 is a point, is a y coordinate on the graph. And then infinity, where I'm going to use a parenthesis because infinity is actually not a number. You can't actually contain the y value infinity. But that's for the parent graph. Now let's go and take a look at the blue graph. The blue graph, you can see the domain, which is nice, is always going to continue to expand. It doesn't matter if I shift it left or up or down at all. It's going to continue to expand. So the domain is going to be all real numbers again. But instead of using the r, I'm going to use negative infinity to infinity. The graph is going to continue going to negative infinity and continue going to infinity. Whereas the range, now the lowest value that this graph goes on the blue graph is not down to 0, but now it goes up to its k coordinate, which is 2. So the lowest y value is 2, and the highest value is going to be infinity. Going over to this graph, you can see that all I did is shifted my graph up 2. But the graph is going to continue to expand. So the domain is going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Whereas the range, as you follow the y values, the lowest y value is again going to be at 0. So it would be 0, comma, infinity. OK, um, now let's go and look into what happens when you have a negative. So a negative outside of the function is basically, remember, going to reflect the graph over the x-axis. So rather than the graph go as going up, now the graph is going to be going down. So there's no transformations. I'm not adding or subtracting anything inside the function or outside the function. So I'm no shifting left or right or up and down. All I'm simply doing is reflecting the graph. Instead of it open up, it's not opening down. So the vertex and the axis symmetry remain the same as my black parent graph. Vertex, 0, comma, 0. Axis of symmetry, x equals 0. All right? Um, but now the graph is going to be going down. So instead, when I have my vertex here at 0, 0, instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1, down 1. And then I'm going to go over 2, down 4. Then, as I mentioned, since my y-axis, y x equals 0, is an axis symmetry. Whatever's on the right-hand side, I can simply reflect on the left-hand side. So that's going to be down 1 over 2, down 1 over 4. And there you go. All right, so now let's go, oh, let's got to go and do the domain range. Um, don't want to forget about that. So the domain. Domain in this case, again, even though the graph is going down, domain only talks about the x value. So the graph is continually to expand in the negative and positive direction. So it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. However, the range, remember the range is going to be set of all y values. Where domain, we look how far left does the graph go to how far right. Whereas the range is going to be how far low does the graph go to compare to how high does it go. So the low, this graph is going to go all the way down to negative infinity. But as high as it only goes up as high as 0. Hence, notice that since it only goes as high as 0, that the vertex right there is called our maximum. Whereas here, this is the low point of the graph, would be called our minimum. So when the graph opens up, it has a minimum value. When the graph goes down, it has a maximum value. All right, so now let's go and get into a couple of these. Um, so this one, the first thing I always like to do before understanding anything else is let's just identify the vertex. So the vertex in this case, and remember it's x minus h, x minus h. So this one trips up a lot of students. Remember, we can always write this as x minus a negative 1 squared. right? x, plus, x minus a negative 1 is the same thing as x plus 1. So it's, remember, it's x minus h. So in this case, it's x minus negative 1. So therefore, h is equal to negative 1. So my vertex is negative 1, h comma k. So 2 is my k. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equals h, which in this case is going to be x equals negative 1. So a lot of times I like to go to my axis of symmetry, draw that axis of symmetry, and then plot the vertex, negative 1 up 2. So now there's my vertex. 
Then I look at this and I say, oh, the graph is opening down. So instead of going up, now the graph is going to be going down. And again, since the absolute value of my a is 1, I'm always going to go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. So over 2, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, I can just reflect these points over the axis of symmetry. to graph. OK, so now let's go and get into the domain and range. Uh, the domain, again, for all quadratics is actually going to be all real numbers. So domain, all real numbers. The range is going to be how low it went, which was negative infinity, all the way up in this example went up to 0. Well, here, the y value, it's going to go all the way up to the y value of 2. So my range is going to be from negative infinity to 2. Oops. I want to include 2, because 2 is a y-coordinate on the graph. Over here, uh, my vertex is going to be now, again, remember it's x minus. You can think of this opposite, but x minus negative 3 is the same thing as x plus 3. So now my vertex is going to be, vertex is going to be uh, negative 3, negative 5. And my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 3. So I'll go to negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And I'll plot that up. Then to go to the vertex, I plot the vertex at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I make a nice big dot. Now, in this case, my a is equal to 1, so it's going to be going up. So, bup, 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 bup. So therefore, from here, I can go over 1, up 1, and then over 2, up, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Graph those points, then just reflect them over. And then continue the graph. In this example, uh, again, my domain is going to be all real numbers, so negative infinity to infinity. Whereas my range, now in this case, is now the lowest. Of, now the graph doesn't go all the way down to infinity. The lowest y value of my graph is at negative 5, which is the y coordinate of my vertex. And the highest it goes is to infinity. So I can say negative 5 to infinity. All right, so the last example kind of gets a lot of students. Um, it's not really one we deal with a lot, and it's a little bit more into the pre-calculus um, range. But it's something that I think is very helpful and positive for you guys uh, to remember. So the main thing is when we have a negative outside, we know that reflects the x-axis. When we have multiplication of a negative on the inside, that's a reflection of the y-axis. And we don't really use reflection of the y-axis about using like even functions, like absolute value or quadratic. Because if you're looking at the parent graph, and you just, deal the, and you just say negative multiply it x squared, well, that just gives you the same graph. Reflecting over the y-axis, it's reflecting about the axis symmetry. So it gives you the same graph. However, when you have a negative and a transformation inside, that starts affecting the graph. So the way that it affects the graph is actually it's saying whatever is multiplied inside the function by negative. So therefore, we actually want to write this as a factoring out the negative So when we factor out that negative, you can see that now I'm multiplying the inside by a negative. I can actually see that I'm actually transforming this graph three units to the right. A lot of students will say, oh, it's always the opposite, three units to the left. Well, actually, in this case, since I factored out that negative, that negative I'm now going to should be shifting it three units to the right. So I'll shift it three units to the right, one, two, three. And then I need to go down one. So my vertex in this case is going to be negative, oops, I'm sorry, positive 3 comma negative 1. My axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals positive 3. So I'll draw a nice little axis of symmetry here. And then again, all I simply need to do is go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. And again, where am I getting that over 1, up 1, over, over 2, up 4? That comes again from my parent graph, which you could create a table for. But the parent graph, just x squared, is always over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. Um, so I can just go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, 1, 2. And then I can just reflect using my axis of symmetry. And there you go. Um, so as far as domain and range, domain, again, is going to be all real numbers. Whereas my range, again, is going to be the y coordinates. The lowest this graph goes on the y axis is negative 1. The, large, the fat higher it goes is going to be infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a quadratic in 
vertex form and determine the domain range. Thanks.